Level 100, Pinnacle of Power for a Pokemon. Very few Pokemon ever reach this level. This is a series of videos in which I push Pokemon's levels to the absolute limit by raising them to 100 in unconventional ways and environments. Because, more or less, I'm crazy. This is the Level 100 Gauntlet. I hope you enjoy. In Pokemon Sword and Shield, before the first gym battle versus Milo in the town of Turfield, there's a whole lot of real estate in the Galar region that the player can cover, including almost the entire wild area. And with the addition of the Isle of Armor and the Crown Tundra with the DLC expansion pass, there's even more that you can do before the first gym. For someone like me who's an enthusiast of doing things before the first gym specifically, Galar is paradise, and the world is my oyster. Or cloister, since we're talking Pokemon here. Which brings us to today's level 100 gauntlet. Once again, I am going to train a Pokemon to level 100 before the first gym. How exactly I'm going to go about doing that? You may already know. You might have already seen an abridged version of this gauntlet in the Crown Tundra movie that I made back in October of last year. But this is the full video today that will really illustrate what the grind was like. Now, given how much ground we have to potentially cover in Galar before the first gym, there are all sorts of ways to go about doing this. Like getting experience candies from raids, which is totally not something that I said I would finish in early 2020. But hey, speaking of the word raid... But no, really. We're going to be training this Pokémon to level 100 in a way that I've already done before. We're going to do the tried and true pickup and rare candy strategy. The ability Pickup, introduced in Ruby and Sapphire and commonly seen on Zigzagoon, gives a Pokémon a 10% chance of finding an item after every single battle. In Sapphire, where I originally did this gauntlet, you had a 10% chance of that item being a rare candy, which would guarantee a level up. But starting with Pokémon Emerald, they made things a little bit more complicated, and made it so the items that you get are based off of the level of the Pickup Pokémon. So you can't start picking up rare candies until you're past level 21. In Sword and Shield, it's level 11, which will hit in no time, but the rare candies are much rarer than 10%, up until we hit the higher levels. The general idea of this pickup strategy is to eliminate the bottleneck and experience gain that eventually happens when battling these low-leveled early game Pokémon that don't give out much experience, especially in Sword and Shield, where higher-leveled Pokémon don't gain as much EXP off of lower-leveled ones. So going off of experience alone, there will eventually be levels where these encounters are basically useless. But having this sweet pickup lottery for a rare candy after every encounter gives them a use once again, and will eventually guide us to victory, once we get enough rare candies to elevate us to level 100 from whatever level we're at. Doing all of this took me 15 hours on Sapphire back in the day. But with these slight changes to experience, and candies being probably a little bit harder to come by with pickup, I wasn't sure how long this would take in Sword and Shield. So on October 30th, day one, I decided to see for myself. Alright, so I named my file Ness. Really don't know why I was thinking that. Um, I don't know what could possibly have me thinking about Ness right now. Dressed up as Ness in one of the easiest Halloween costumes of all time, I decided I'd stream this on my Twitch, and I made a stream layout in the style of the Earthbound naming screen. I also tried to put some handy images on the side to explain exactly what I was doing with this challenge, but I think I only caused more questions, and in retrospect, I would have never been able to guess what exactly was going on with these pictures here. So let me explain. We were going to do this without any EXP candies, so we weren't going to do any raids. We're going to do this all before battling Milo at the first gym, and we're also going to take on Peony and actually win that battle, and oh no, I haven't actually explained that yet in this video, so here's another explanation real quick. So when you go to the Crown Tundra DLC, the first thing you have to do before you're allowed to do anything else is battle against this dude Peony. And no matter what point in the game that you're at, he always has level 70 Pokémon. You're allowed to lose this fight and still progress in the story just fine. But here, this is a no-loser zone, and we gotta win this battle. And I'm gonna win it in style with a level 100 Pokémon. Because we have to do this battle first, the Crown Tundra is effectively off-limits for this challenge. Which is okay, because it would maybe make it a little bit too easy. Because you can catch high-leveled Pokémon in Dynamax Adventures, and always encounter wild Pokémon with levels in the 60s no matter what point in the game you're at, including the experienced goldmine that is Audino. 
So with all these handicaps in mind, I started up the game and began to prepare for this challenge. Please enter a name. No. The first thing I had to do was collect my pickup Pokemon. And in Sword and Shield, we can't go with the standard Zigzagoon of Hoenn. We have to go for the cooler Galarian Zigzagoon. So I caught six of these bad boys on Route 2 and made sure they all had the pickup ability. Yeah, one billion dollars, we could go with that. One billion dollars and I'll stream Minecraft. Then it was time to name our Zigzagoons. Occasionally enlisting some help from the chat. This is the chosen one. This is the one that's gonna become powerful, the chosen one. Sam Kablam. Saying, name one after me. All right, Sam Kablam, this is for you. <laughs> named it after you. Well, named it after me. I like the name Party Rocker. I had also just added a chat command that rolls a random number between 1 and 8192 and noticed people were typing that while I was asking for names, so I named one that too. Shiny Roll. Raincoat, I love that. Yeah, we're naming it Raincoat. And because the last one had found two potions on the walk back from the professor's house to the Pokemon Center, I named it Potion Cellar. And with that, we had our team. The chosen one that would reach level 100, and the five Zigzagoon that would support it on its journey. I then set my uniform number to the pinnacle of power for a uniform number, and I decided I'd explore and try and grind in one of the DLC areas before the first badge. The Isle of Armor. I had pretty high hopes about the grind that was ahead of us, and I think the Isle of Armor is a great setting for it. The Crown Tundra with its level 60 wild Pokemon feels more like a post-game area, while the Isle of Armor stays a little bit more scaled to the point you're at in the game, so it won't really feel all that busted. Just playing through up to this point alone got some of our Zigzagoon up to level 11 where they'd start picking up rare candy, thanks to the experience share always being on. And the Isle of Armor is also home to our favorite round pink ball of experience points, Chansey. All right, we're gonna get some big money EXP right now. This will help us a lot. Oh, look at that. These Chansey quickly carried us through the early levels, but the amount of EXP we'd get from them would only go down over time as our level increased due to the way the experience formula works since their levels are so low. I still battled some other pink puffballs in the process, and within a matter of 10 encounters, my Zigzagoons were already evolving into Linoon except for the chosen one, because there's an additional experience bonus that you get for having a Pokemon that can evolve by level up that's at a level beyond its normal point of evolution. It's only a 1.2x multiplier, but we need pretty much anything we can get. Speaking of boosts, you also get a free 1.5x experience boost by getting the experience charm the first time you enter the dojo here on the Isle of Armor. The levels in the encounters were flying by, and with all the multipliers, level 100 felt inevitable. But something was off. I wasn't finding any rare candies. I knew that rare candies were kind of hard to find at this level, but it took 155 encounters before I found my first one. Rare candy! And it took me 182 encounters to realize that I could change the date on my Switch to a day where there's fog and make Blissey spawn instead of Chansey for even more EXP. Trying to encounter these Blissey without a bicycle was sometimes kind of difficult because they ran away. So I took the time to master the art of sneaking. In the grass, by lightly tilting the control stick, you can actually sneak up on these Blissey without them even noticing you. Alrighty. We zoom in. We are moving in on our target. She is walking in place. She might walk into us. We walk right past her. She is oblivious to our presence. She is about to walk off a cliff into the river. We must save her. And after spending the rest of the night sneaking up on Blissies until I was too tired to continue, after 206 encounters, we were at level 39. And while I got much stealthier and sneakier, I still wasn't as sneaky as the rare candies, as I had only acquired two in the first night. October 31st. Day two of the gauntlet, and day two of being Ness, and I'm holding up four fingers. And probably the last day I'm gonna be Ness. I can't be Ness every day of this. 
But yeah, I'm about to do a short stream for a little bit more, getting some levels in. And then I'm gonna go to a very small gathering of friends to play some Halloween levels and games. And I'll probably bring my Switch to that and get in a little bit of grinding there too. So let's have a good Halloween starting with this stream. So during the day, I knocked on the door of every Blissey on the Isle of Armor, trick-or-treating for some rare candy. But I had forgotten that only little kids and babies trick-or-treat during the day on Halloween. So my big boy Linoons were barely picking up anything. Until I arrived at my friend's place later that night and started playing in handheld while we played all sorts of spooky games. It was there I really started to see the rare candy start trickling in. And while it was more likely because my Linoon were higher level now and rare candies were becoming more common, I like to think it was because it was Halloween night and the conditions were perfect for trick-or-treating. I didn't make a significant amount of progress, but I just had a lot of fun hanging out, playing spooky games, and trying really hard to do random speedrun skips. Y'all ready for the skip? Yeah. Alright, here goes nothing. Ready? Go! I think I'm prepared! Oh! Bruh. Today's a brand new day, the 1st of November, day 3 of the gauntlet. I have the remnants of a Baja Blast right here. And we're starting out the day almost at level 50. I'm not dressed as Ness anymore, but that's okay. Let's just do this gauntlet. So I streamed it again for a little while, and I finally removed the question marks from the bottom of the layout that I put there because I wasn't sure if I was going to commit to finishing this gauntlet. Then I did some offline grinding while watching anime with the boys. Alrighty, I'm about to go to bed for the night. We're at level 56. And we have uh, 13 rare candies, so we're effectively at level 69. I think that's a nice stopping point. I started day four slowly grinding this out while also sitting in a work meeting at my desk. Party rockers in the house tonight. And it became apparent that Blissies weren't giving out nearly as much experience anymore. So I decided I'd see how much EXP I could get from the Pokemon of the Wild area especially beyond this bridge, which is an area that I didn't even realize you could access this early in the game. And let me tell you, the Pokémon here are incredibly powerful. Much too strong for a mere plebeian with zero badges like me to even be able to capture. Like this Zigzagoon. That's actually weaker than my Zigzagoon. And gave less experience than Blissey. Or this strong Maractus. Dancing like a brave warrior. And still giving us experience that's really not worth our trouble. What about a Pokemon that's been around forever, discovered in ancient ruins? Surely its wisdom will grant us some experience. Well, if even the ancients don't grant us that much experience, maybe we should turn to something that's out of this world. Lunatone from space. This thing's level 42, which is 12 levels higher than most of the other wild Pokemon I was seeing here. It put up quite a fight, too. Surely, after this long, hard battle, we should gain a lot of experience, right? You've got to be kidding me. I had no choice but to turn to the Tyrant King of this area to see what kind of experience it would give. Tyranitar. This thing is level 60, and I had to enlist the help of my Linoon in order to take this thing down. It was an incredibly powerful foe, and I could easily see why it was crowned the king of this area. Given how huge the wild area is and how many Pokemon are here, I knew this thing had to be tough in order to be the king. And that it would surely grant us quite a bit of experience for our troubles. I'm not going to even use the squeaky toy sound effect for this one, this was just kind of sad. The trade-off between the number of turns I had to spend battling in each battle to the amount of EXP I was getting in the wild area just wasn't worth it. So I went back to fighting the fodder on the Isle of Armor. I think at this point of the gauntlet, it became clear that we hit the experience points plateau and really just needed to start getting in battles to try and get that chance at a rare candy after the battle. So I'm not entirely sure if this statement is entirely accurate. Still a zigzagoon. By the end of the day, I had done almost 500 encounters for the day. But if you looked at the levels, it looked like we had barely made any progress at all. It was clear that to reach level 100, I needed to line my pockets with rare candies. November 3rd, this morning, my Wii U went out and voted. So I'm pretty proud of it for fulfilling its civic duty. And now I'm gonna fulfill my Pokemon duty. 
and continue this gauntlet. So I continued the grind as usual, no longer paying any attention to EXP and only to candies. Rare candy! Four left. The first time I did this, I got quite a few questions from people asking why I didn't immediately use the rare candies after getting them and instead waited until the end to apply them all at once. And that actually has a pretty simple answer. The higher level you go, the more EXP is needed to reach the next level. So there's a thousands of EXP difference between using a rare candy at level 10 compared to using it at level 90. Rare candy! Another rare candy! I think one more candy left. 32 rare candies. Level 67. That brings us to level 99. So we need to either level up one more time or get one more rare candy from pickup. And that's it. On November 5th, day 7, after 1967 encounters, the deed was finally done. And there's our final rare candy! Nice! That means we can finish up the gauntlet right now. This is going to be so much easier than the time I did this in Ruby and Sapphire. Because um, when I did it in Ruby and Sapphire, I, I had to just like sit through the entire thing and cancel the animation every single level. But this time... I can just do this. I'm gonna use it 32 times to get Linoon. We might have to wait a minute to get Obstagoon, I'm not sure. It might not be Obstagoon time yet, we'll see. But uh, let's get to Linoon right now, let's get to level 99. Listen to those dings. Love those dings. Oh, yeah. 99. And now, we can evolve. So satisfying to watch that happen. Now, the chosen one is a Linoon. And now... Level 100. Sick. It evolved after experiencing numerous fights. Yeah, the, the, the number of fights was definitely pretty numerous for this. Oh yeah, let's see how long this gauntlet took. Which is not in the options menu. Uh, we are at 37 hours and 27 minutes. And we've been doing this gauntlet pretty much since I started this file, so that's about how long it took. A little bit longer than um, the time that I did this in Let's Go with uh, the, the single catch combo, which is a little bit surprising to me, because it didn't really feel that long. But now, even though I had reached level 100, my business wasn't quite done with this gauntlet quite yet. We still had one more goal to meet. Defeating Peony and the Crown Tundra. This is what we've been training for. Let's go, Chosen One. Well, that's a good start. <laughs> that's double super effective, too, with super power. I mean, we could also maybe use a healing item if we actually had any. Unfortunately, um, we're before the first badge right now, though, and we don't have good access to any healing items before the first badge. Uh, we have to wait until we can get to Pokemarts before we can actually um, get items like revives or potions. We'll just have to tough this fight out. Party Rocker. Finishing off the job. And we've won. There we go. We have defeated Peony. Ness then went on to become a millionaire, selling off all the treasures that he had picked up along the way. And then with this Obstagoon and a full team of legendaries caught through Dynamax adventures, swept through the entire rest of the game, and became Galar's champion. Not many know what happened to Absol after this challenge, since it took him like six months to start editing it after he filmed it, what a loser. But I think if we knew where he was, 
He'd say thanks so much for watching, and I'll see you next time.